Welcome to Red Tastic. Story 1 I, 18 female, recently finished high school and decided to take a gap year before getting into college or taking my next steps. I still have a part time job to maintain myself. My parents were so happy to not have me as a dependent anymore and left for the suburbs to enjoy a slower pace of life. They left me the city condo. It's three bedrooms and more than enough space for me and went off. A few months after that move, my brother 30 male fell on tough times. He has a family, a wife 29 female and two children 3 and 1. Since my brother and I have quite the age gap between us, we've never really grown up together. But he asked to just have his family live with me till he could figure things out. I didn't mind. There's plenty of space for all of us to live comfortably, so I agreed. Plus, he assured me it was only going to be for a short time. Anyways, his wife started ordering me around and making small irritating changes around the house. She started monitoring what I was watching and what music I was listening to, always using the kids as an excuse, even when they were asleep. She also insisted that I shouldn't have any friends over and instituted a curfew that I had to adhere to. Even though my work shift usually ended later, I tried to accommodate her demands, but it all felt unfair. So I had my parents sit her down to talk about it and she seemed to agree, but that was all for show around the parents. She didn't make any changes at home. I couldn't eat what I wanted or leave my items in the communal living spaces and they were kids safe items like jackets and sweaters. I thought I would just put up with it till they left. Then my friend suggested a party since I'm the only one in the group with my own place. We all agreed I would do the hosting. I talked to my brother and sister-in-law asking them to make themselves scarce for that one night. My brother agreed. His wife didn't, but I didn't think she had that much sway over anything. The day of the party, I came home with my friends and found the door locked with no key in sight. We usually leave one extra behind. I called my brother and sister-in-law, but they didn't pick up. Silly thing was that I could hear them from the other side of the door. We ended up going to another house and the party was definitely not what we had planned. I stayed over at a friend's place and came home to insist that my brother and his family have overstayed their welcome and should leave. They were not happy to hear that. My brother said he needed more time to figure things out and both of them insisted that I was being selfish and that I couldn't throw them out when they had children to look after. I've insisted that they leave though. I can't continue living under such conditions. Am I the a-hole? Rather than being grateful, they are taking over the house. Update. It's been about a few weeks since those events took place. I talked to my parents and luckily, they took my side. Turns out, my parents had offered to let my brother and his family stay with them in the suburbs. But they wanted the city apartment and had been hoping that I would just yield it to them. But they moved out and moved in with my parents and my dad gave them two months to figure things out. They had been with me for about five months, way beyond the soon my brother had promised. Now, my brother and sister-in-law are not talking to me. They blame me for this situation they find themselves in. I don't care though. I'm just glad that my sister-in-law is not in my space anymore. Your sister-in-law sounds annoying and shameless. They've been staying for five months and it's not their house. Your sister-in-law shouldn't impose such rigid laws on you. You deserve the space just as much as they do. Maybe even more because you're a teenager and your brother's an adult. I'm glad your parents took your side and got them out of the apartment because it didn't sound like they wanted to ever leave. The fact that they're not talking to you anymore just shows that they're petty and immature. Overall, your sister-in-law and brother seem like the perfect match. Story 2 My cousin and a boyfriend, soon to be married, were having their baby shower and the whole family was invited to the party. My mother and aunts loved to cook, so they wanted to gather the ingredients and make a huge dinner themselves. I drove my car and my father drove his and we basically pushed the shopping carts along and got our credit cards ready while the women shoveled everything they wanted into the carriages. We finally got everything to my cousin's place and we started offloading my dad's car first. While I was inside, I got a chance to say hi to my cousin to congratulate on her baby shower. The conversation started off light but took a weird turn. 
She asked me how my parents raised me and specific details like if they grounded me, what kinds of punishment they used, what I did when I was little, and what regrets I had as a kid that I would change. I thought they were trying to learn how to raise their child, but it was weird because I'm a single guy. They would have been better off asking my parents about these things. Here's where things get dark. I ask my cousin why she's asking me all of this and she says, I just want to raise my baby better than you. That made no sense because I never raised any babies. The vibe I got was definitely that it was an insult, but on the off chance she wasn't intentionally being rude, I just laughed it off and said, Well, I'm no Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, but I do all right for. I assumed she meant that she wanted to raise her baby to be better than me, which is fine since parents want the world for their kids. Nope, she just kept going. Well, that's true. Did your parents ever think you would turn out this way? I said, Well, I think they just wanted me to be happy. Her? Are you? Me? Well, I'm definitely happy for you. Congratulations. I'm trying really hard to steer things away from me. Her. Thanks. Do you ever plan on having kids? Me. I just gotta find the right person. But until then, I'm gonna enjoy life as is. There's no need to stress out wanting something else and taking what we have for granted. Her. Sure. Well, I'm younger than you and I already have a family. Don't wait too long. Or else you might end up dying alone. I asked her directly what she meant. She just laughs, shrugs and leaves. I hear her again and she says, Don't get angry at me. You're the one who refuses to go out and meet people. If you bothered to leave your house every once in a while, maybe you would have a family of your own by now. I just don't want my baby to end up like you. Everyone within earshot was dead silent. I just stared at her for who knows how long and she just ended up rubbing her belly and waddling away. I leave, taking my car home and halfway there, I realize half the groceries are still in my car. At this point, I could have driven back and dumped it on the porch. But I decided F it, screw her. I ignored all calls and texts and just took a nap. Update My dad heard the whole thing and told my mother about it, who was working in the kitchen. They both politely excused themselves afterwards and drove over to my place to talk about it. My dad drove my half of the groceries to my cousin's place and then came back. There's now a massive feud in our family, WhatsApp with two groups. One, family who are sticking up for me and telling other people to stop provoking me, mostly older relatives. Two, people who are saying I'm an a-hole, mostly the younger generation. Everyone sucks, OP. Your cousin was way out of line with what she said to you. I hope no one decides to blame this on pregnancy hormones. I can't imagine where she got those beliefs about you and for how long she has had them. You, on the other hand, made things worse by taking the food home. By your own admission, you said once you realized you could turn around, you instead kept going home and took a nap. You could have had most, if not everyone on your side. By taking the food home, you have divided the group's empathy. Now for some comments. Not the a-hole. Who in their right mind thinks any of those questions are okay? Family or not, she stepped way over the line. F her and her self-righteousness. If she's going to insult you, you have zero obligation to give her free shit. And attend her stupid party. Getting knocked up doesn't mean her life is going any better than yours, and she's an idiot if she thinks otherwise. Not the a-hole. You didn't drive off with the food purposely to be nasty. You drove off and didn't bother to go back to give the food. That makes a difference. You weren't revengeful. Some pregnant women get really nasty and self-important, thinking they are carrying baby Jesus. Like, you're not suddenly the son of everyone's lives because you let someone come in you, lady. Pregnancy is not a free pass to be nasty. That sounds terrible from her. But your last line makes it clear you knew you were going to hurt her and the other guests. It doesn't matter that you were hurt and angry. After behaving so calmly in the house, you decided to hurt back after you left. If you had turned around and taken the groceries back, everyone would have seen that you were the better person. But you dropped to her level instead. And now the story will be, oh, they had an argument about him being antisocial and he stormed off with the food and ruined the party for everyone. Everyone sucks here. Story 3 I am currently 6 months pregnant with my first baby. My husband and I have been married for 3 years and have a happy marriage overall. With our baby coming in about 3 and a half months, 
We're both nervous and excited as any new parents would be. We are reading books, watching YouTube videos, just trying to get an idea of what to do because the most experience we have is holding or playing with babies for about 10 minutes at a time, lol, and then handing them back to their parents when they cry. The part I'm most nervous about is how awful the first month or so is going to be. My doctor says that I'm likely to have a scheduled C-section because of some health issues. I can't even begin to imagine how rough it is going to be. Recovering from a major surgery, recovering from labor and delivery, sleepless nights with a crying newborn, changing diapers, breastfeeding, pumping, hormones all over the place, etc. All for the very first time. I get awful headaches when I get less than six hours of sleep. I can't even imagine how bad it'll be in the first month. After the doctor told me that I'm likely to have a scheduled C-section, I told my husband we absolutely need outside help at first. My husband was sort of against this idea. He said he would take on the bulk of the work. I know my husband. He's very responsible and follows through on his word. But he doesn't know babies, and neither do I. It's not like this is our third kid and we know what we're doing. We don't. I called my mom who lives two hours away and gave her the general updates. I told her I needed help. For reference, my mom is the nicest person on the planet. Yes, my husband and my mom get along well and loves being a mom and grandma. She proposed this. Yes, I can come help out. Here's what I think would be best. You and your husband watch the baby in the daytime. You focus on breastfeeding, pumping, and recovering from surgery. Your husband can focus on keeping the house in order and changing diapers, putting the baby to sleep, etc. And then I'll do the nighttime duty. I will slowly switch my sleep schedule so I can be awake at night. And hopefully, if you're pumping enough, I can just feed the baby at night. So at least you both will get a full night of sleep. This was heaven sent to me. I told her I needed to talk to my husband, but 99% yes. And oh my god, thank you so much. I love you, mom. Fast forward to today. It's been a week of back and forth on this. We've had rational discussions. We've yelled. We've tried everything, but neither will budge. My husband insists that having a third adult is suffocating. And trust me, I'll take care of the baby for everything besides breastfeeding. That's all you gotta do. But I feel like he's being really naive and I'll have to deal with the fallout. So yesterday I said F it and told my mom yes. Obviously this led to a fight with my husband who is upset because he clearly said no. But I went through with it anyways. Now for some comments. Yeah, this feels more like everyone sucks here to me. I feel like OP absolutely overstepped, but I also feel like her husband is really underestimating how difficult a C-section recovery is and how exhausting it will be for both of them. A compromise should have been made. Personally, I think they should each get a week. For the first week after the baby is born, they can try it husband's way. The next week, mom can come to meet the baby and help out a little. This might be one of those situations where you don't know what you need until you get it. Maybe OP will find out that they don't need the outside help as much as she thinks. Or maybe her husband will realize that a third set of hands will keep him from losing his mind. Like most parents, they will figure it out as they go. You're not the a-hole OP. Typically, I would say that house guests and things involving a kid have to be approved by both parents. But your body is about to do something completely wild. Men can help with a lot of things, but they do not always understand the ongoing physical, and psychological impact of birth on a woman. You really stressed how unsure you feel and you want your mom to be there to help teach you how to do this. There may be things going on physically that you won't want to talk to your husband about, but you want support with. At the end of the day, you need this. And when a new mom is happy and healthy and feeling confident, the baby thrives. You need your mom in order to feel happy and confident. So that's the way it should be. Nature isn't fair. I wish it was, but it's not. You need your mom, mom should be there. Hi OP, you're definitely not the a-hole. I have to assume all the you're the a-hole responses are from young men who've never had a child and are more obsessed with men's rights than with the health and comfort of a first-time mother. Parenting is a joint responsibility, but pregnancy, birth and postpartum recovery are not. That burden falls solely on women, which means that women get to decide what they need. People are acting like you're cutting your husband out of major parenting decisions. That's, sorry for the language, completely effing ridiculous. 
Nobody would be criticizing you if you unilaterally decided you wanted help while recovering from any other major surgery. After reading all the comments on here, I am honestly so mad on your behalf.